All right, we're here today with Grandmother Frida. Yeah. Um, my name is Frida. Um, I'm grandmother to, to many of my grandchildren. Today, um, I'm sitting in uh, a Japanese garden in the mid of the city. And what I'd like to do is I want to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their culture, heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other language, Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations. So when I say that, um, paying respect to Aboriginal people and the land and our beliefs uh, for thousands of years, we looked after our children, families and mothers and the mothers became aunties and aunties became mothers. So um, today I'm sitting here and I want to do a follow up from when I was talking about my grandson being taken away. Um, I just need to put it into more perspective. Um, and explain to why he was taken away from us on the 17th, 17th of um, January. And uh, so nine, month, nine weeks of his little life, he hasn't been with, he was with us. So he should have been taken away in the first place. You know, I just need to explain to what they want in the safety plan that they put in for us. So, so they, they're saying that we had breached the safety plan they put in place. Now, there was two sets of um, safety plans put in place regarding not to be around baby under the influence of drugs. Now, my daughter was not on any drugs before and after my grandbaby was born, Isaiah. Um, first thing we had to do with the plan was to contact the Women's and Children's Hospital when he came out. So um, the plan was put in place whilst, a few days after she had baby while she was in hospital. They made her stay there, stay in the Women's and Children's for a very long, for a week or so. so to get the plan and put in place while she's in hospital just after having baby um, because of a breach that they're supposed to have done as parents so which is ridiculous so um, she had to contact the women's and children's for health checks for Isaiah now he came out of the women's and children's uh, with COVID. Now two weeks of his little life we were isolated. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't get down to the hospital because everybody had to have, um, be isolated. So here they are saying that um, he was supposedly be checked by the women's and children's and then um, we had to follow up for his appointments. We live in the country. It's hard sometimes to get to these appointments. So was this a breach? Um, CDP, CPD needs to explain, was this one of the breaches? Now, I don't understand because um, nine weeks of his life, we have been trying our best to do this. Each week he was having appointments with um, cats. They were coming down, checking him every week. So, you know, that they can tell you that we, we're keeping up with them. So, um, my daughter resides with me, with baby, since he was born. So, as I said, CPD, CPD wanted mum and dad to see, seek help from Aboriginal Legal Rights Movement, the 
that's what CPD want. CAFs, none, and other agencies su support for what? Now that was all put in place. We already already done that. So, you know, it's so unfair that they want these two young parents to follow up where the isolation, <laughs> the isolation where we are in the country. Now, where we are, there's no buses. They have to rely on me and then I will take them to the appointment. Sometimes I get sick and I can't go, you know? So now my daughter's been breached because the appointments are saying about the blood test and everything. This is ridiculous. So mum and dad had drug, drug, drug screens before he was born. Two weeks before he was born. So they were targeted by um, child protection. They were targeted because um, the person said they have to see the babies um, before they're born into domestic violence. Now there was no domestic violence whatsoever. This is what they told her, that they had to do this before baby was born because of the father's background. He had a criminal record. Okay, everybody's got criminal record. They keep bringing it up all the time and saying that he's a risk to his baby, to his partner. Now, there was no um, guarantee that he was um, um, a risk to his child. There was no, they went on by assumptions. They assumed that he'd be going off his nut at his baby, in front of his baby and his partner. Of witness that he's never done that maybe he has done something like that in the past but he has not done that around um, his baby and things like that so where do where do they draw the line where do they make these um, you know run these people young people's lives it's not just Tina um, the young couples and everything it's, it's other young mums who have to deal with all this and this is wrong they have got no support in what they do and we need to make a stand about supporting these parents young parents no one's supporting them they just look at them oh they're drug addicts or oh, they can't look after their kids and whatever look at the ones that are the older people that have got children and that are abusing their children just like that no one's put their hands up and go and grab those kids you know so they've got to target the young ones this is tina's first and so and when they came and got him, he was living in a safe house. He was in a safe house. Tina was staying at, in a safe house. And I'm under the jurisdiction of Family SA. I'm looking after my other two grandkids. That's a safe house. So why wasn't he um, taken away? He should have stayed and said, look, Ben, you've got to move and you've got to go out and we'll get some support. No support was put in place for these kids. So, you know, these, these lot have got a, got a lot to answer for and it's not fair on young parents. It's not fair. So, you know, the test was done. My daughter didn't have anything in her system for the baby and then dad had to be supervised. That was put in place. So one mistake he breathed, one mistake that he was there without me being there. You know, they're not children. They're parents that they, they know that they can look after themselves. They've stuffed up where they said about the supervising. You know, like, that baby needs mum and dad. There's mum and dad's baby. And that's what they've got to stop and think. And so my grandson was taken away on the day I came back from my cousin's funeral. And, um... So very heartbreaking, you know. We pleaded with them because we never done anything wrong. We haven't breached anything. We were in tears. We cried and cried, you know. And um, not because they assumed that Ben would go off his nut at his child and it's the reason why he was taken away from us on assumptions on, on, and assuming that he is a risk to his child. 
assuming that Tina's a risk to her child. How can that be? Who, who has done the breach here? Was it me? Was it Ben? Or was it Tina? Nothing was stipulated about the breach, about this baby um, was amongst us and, um, you know, tormented or whatever. This baby was in a house full of love. This baby, um, younger families are always loving their children. And, you know, and I've been a grandmother looking after my other two for 20, uh, 10 years, and they're still in my care. This was very traumatic for me. Um, I was traumatized before about my other grandkids taken away from me. I, just, I was just reliving the trauma again about um, my grand, grandson being taken away. So who was it, um, sorry, why was the breach made on my grandson? Mum, she had done nothing wrong. The father should have seen, been the one because he breached. He even said he had done, done, he even admitted it to be the wrong thing. So, you know, I don't see how he did anything wrong. I don't see why he was breached. I mean, he is for, you know, see, CDP, or child protection, is supposed to be sort of supporting these families. You know, you're doing the wrong thing. You're being blacklisted for things that you don't even know about. You don't even know. You didn't even examine. You didn't even um, come and talk to us about it. You didn't even ask us. You know, you're the ones who put these plans into place. Oh, okay, we followed. But, um, you know, nine weeks of his life, we followed what you people wanted, you know? So, the baby's born and we can't get to these appointments. What did, do we, what did we do wrong? No one stipulated what did we do wrong, you know? So, tomorrow is gonna be very heartbreaking for us because mum and dad have got to see him separately for an hour. How heartbreaking that is going to be. My daughter's in tears uh, every day. We are in tears every day because we've done nothing wrong. I can't even walk into the room where his little things are and I start crying. My heart's breaking for him. I need him home. I just don't understand. His, my baby's done nothing wrong. My daughter's done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong, but I want my baby's home. I want my grandson home. We, we want, want that for you. Home. It's not fair. It's not <laughs> fair. We need him home. These people need to have the answer to We need to get him home, and I'm sorry. Everybody who's been through all this, we should make a stand and do something, you know. I know there's parents out there, there's mums and dads. Uh, I've been fighting the system for so long and my other grandkids were taken away. They left me for two years, three years. I just not long got them back. And they've been with me now for three years, so it was traumatising. Because I've done nothing wrong, and they just came along and did the same thing to my grandson. So this is what uh, the follow-up is of everything. So I just need to stipulate, and I need to put that all in place about what has been going on, and it shouldn't have happened. He should be home with us. Um, we worry about his mentality, even though he's nine, ten weeks old. You know, he's born into seeing his mum, he's born into seeing his grandmother, he's born into seeing his dad and his cousins. But I'm worried about his mentality because not seeing his mum, seeing strangers. They're not going to give the love to my grandson like we have, you know. Can't they see that? Can't blood. they do that? Yeah, his blood, he's our blood. Should be, should be like that. Hard looking even even here. You see mums with their babies. Just 
is heartbreaking. It breaks my heart. They're sitting around with their babies in the pram. Sorry. Thank you, Grandmother Frida. So it's your lawful instruction. I want him home. Yeah, he needs to be home. returned immediately. I need, I need some help from all them fellas out there to help us find our way, find our heart. We need this stretch from all you fellas, you know? Give us some stretch. Yep, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the yeah. community together so yeah. that everyone's standing in support and we're going to get him home. Yeah. Thank you.